how do you define setting standards in a relationship and why do you think it's important? So, you gotta watch out for that. You gotta watch out for that reverse psychology because they be trying to, you know, make it seem like, or they're gaslighting you. Date someone who shows you like different. Does your bare minimum increase? Like I like to resolve the issue right then and there. Like I don't I like want to do that yes, too. Like, and I am here with another segment. This is the third episode of Divine Divulgence. Today we'll be talking about setting standards in a relationship. Today I have with me... Hey guys, my name is Erin. Erin, what do you do? What do people know? I am in tech, <laughs> so I'm a software engineer. Big money, big money. Um. <laughs> yes. Where are, you? Where are you from? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and um, I just moved to Columbus like two years ago, so fairly new. Two years already? Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Yep. We met at Bowling Green um, playing basketball. So. Yeah. BG. Shout out to BG. <laughs> if anyone knows what that is. Right. Right. No one knows what BG is. If you know, you know. Yeah. All right. So. It's just us today. We're going to be I'm going to ask her questions about setting standards in a relationship, um, communicating your standards and self love and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Yes. <laughs> all right. So first question: um, How do you define setting standards in a relationship, and why do you think it's important? Well, I think. Setting standards in a relationship starts like within yourself. Like the more time you spend with yourself, I feel like the more you get to know your own love language and kind of like what you're looking for. So, you know, that starts with the quality time within yourself. And then, you know, just knowing what to look for and knowing not to accept things when you see them. Like a lot of people give a lot of people a lot of chances. Like I, yeah. Well, as soon as I see them right there, I'm correcting <laughs> it. I'm like, wait, hold on, I don't, I don't like that. So, it's just like being verbal about it as well, like yeah. communicating it to your partner. So, did you? Okay, so did you know like how to set standards right off the bat, or did you have to learn that like as you grew yeah. older and like trial and error with relationships? Um, that's a good question. I think. It definitely comes from trial and error. Um, it takes a lot to know like what really triggers you and like what your love language is. Cause I feel like if you don't me, I don't have a lot of long like long, long, long term relationships. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you have to experience through trial and error and get out of like each, each relationship which you can. Yeah. So it definitely does take a lot of learning. So. Thanks. Yeah. Especially because, like, you have a dad in your life. So, like, do you think he helped you with, like, like, oh, my dad is, you know, this. So, I'm not taking, like, I because mm -hmm. your dad's pretty active and stuff like that. He's yeah. a good dad. So, like, he kind of set that, like, bar. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, my dad did set the bar <laughs> high. I would say, like, princess treatment <laughs> is my expectation. Because that's what my dad is. But, um, yeah, that definitely... Like ingrained in you from a young age, like when you see your father treating your mom a certain way, it's just like, okay, that's the standard. Like now my expectation has to be up here. Right, yeah. And so, like anything less than that, it feels like, you know, you're settling. You're, yeah, you're settling. But over time, I will say that also is like bad too, because the way that they were back then is different. Yeah, so like this, the generation. Yeah, the generation, their standard of things is definitely different now. So you have to recognize like how the times have changed and like kind of level set your standards. So, yeah. See, I was the opposite because I didn't have like a dad that set this, the bar high. So I kind of had to learn from like what not to look for, you mm -hmm. know, like, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's good though, because you get more, I feel like you get more experience that way. Because me, I have very low tolerance. 
So <laughs> one thing you out the door, right. like, but that's, that's bad. Good. I don't know. I feel like that's good. Really? Yeah. Okay. I I don't know. Like, don't waste my time. I'm not gonna waste your time. If I'm not what you looking for, or if you're not treating me the way that I want to be treated, like my problem was. I tried to change them. Like I knew that I didn't like how they were, but I tried to change them to fit what I like, you know, yeah. and that's just wasting both of our time because I know what you're doing. I don't like, and I'm just going to keep like badgering, badgering you because I don't like how you are. So I should have just, you know, okay, this is how this person is. That's not what I like. Move on, you know? So I feel like, yeah, it's just like a waste of time. Like, if they show you who they are, believe them. Like, don't try and change them. They're only going to change if they show if they you. Change. Yeah, if they show you who they are, that's like, I'll give you like, okay, we'll talk about it, come back. But if they keep doing it, no, that's a no-no. Right. I mean, I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> Peace. That also comes with self-love, though. Like, I, I feel like previously, like, I lacked self-love. So it's like, oh, well, you know maybe like even like i know who i am i know what i bring to the table i know the type of female i am but like i let like the narcissism like get over me like you telling me i'm the problem oh yeah and it's like oh well damn maybe i am the problem and then so i'm trying to fix myself and i'm beating myself up and then i'm trying to you know try and figure out what we could do to make it work and really you're the problem yeah you know and i know her psychology yeah. Uh, you gotta watch out for that. You gotta watch out for the reverse psychology because they be trying to, you know, make it seem like, or they gaslight you, you know, mm -hmm. make you seem like you're the problem. So it's definitely like things you learn over time, like the little indicators. Yeah. Of, okay, that's definitely gaslighting or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you just gotta call it out. I'm like, wait, did you just, <laughs> did you just try to like gaslight me? I know I'm not going crazy, but yeah. Yeah, I think I, I gotta. I think I'm getting there though, like the self love and and really just speaking up, you know, mm -hmm. like because I yeah. struggle with that a lot. Like I I would see something like them red flags and we just try to ignore them. Like no, no, no. I yeah I learned not to. Cause mm -hmm. look, men are smart. Like I feel like men are smarter than we give them credit. They know what they be doing. <laughs> they know like. Mm -mm. <laughs> Oh my, they do. They be trying to be sneaky though. They do be trying to be sneaky. I'm like, <laughs> it's like when it, you thought it was going to work. It's not. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I think, um, and I think it starts with self-love for sure. Like, you have to know what your standards are. You know, you have to know your worth. You have to know all of that before you can set standards. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it starts with that. That self-healing and you know, self-realization first, and then you can set those standards. Um, okay, so what factors do you consider when determining your uh, personal standard, standards? Um, I think I think about like what I, like I know I enjoy certain things out of life that I would do like by myself. Like I know I like to go out, I know I like to travel, I know I like to you know, just chill, kick it at the house. And so just finding someone that aligns on the same path as you as well, like even career level, mm -hmm. I think that's very important because a lot of times you'll get into something, you like that person, but they might be heading in a totally like different direction. Yeah. So like that is, that's a standard too. It's like not allowing someone to kind of like pull you away from the path that you're right. on. Um, so you just kind of like make, make a little list of the things you enjoy, where you see yourself, like your own personal goals. And mm -hmm. then if someone is in addition to that, then, you know, those should be your standards. So okay. I feel like that's where it starts is a lot of quality time. Journaling helps, yeah. like journaling your list for the year and like for where you see yourself in five years. Mm -hmm. And like, if y'all see y'all so different, like it's okay to be a little bit off, but right, yeah, completely off. Then like, like, if they're taking too much away from you, then that's kind of like compromising. Yeah, you know, it's like it's if you could have a plan to go to school, you have a plan to do this, and you look at their plan, their plan is just. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'll be here for a while. Like, wait, that doesn't yeah. add up with my plan, though. So, and it's, yeah, n not even that. Like, it's like obviously we're educated and stuff like that. Like, we have careers, mm -hmm. and then like 
you see somebody and they have no goals or aspirations to like grow like we yeah. continuously want to grow and you're just fine working this twelve dollar an hour job and you don't yeah. want to go back to school you don't want to get a trade you don't want to start your own business stuff like that so like I'm going to continue to progress and I'm going to pass you like you know I'm not you're not, I'm not going to have you hold me back Right. Um, so just have somebody that has the same goals and aspirations to grow and, you know, the same motivation to grow and not be, you know, stagnant. Yeah. And I that's think, big too. like, some of the times we lack things within ourselves. Like, we have aspirations. Like, I never had an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset. Mm -hmm. So that would be a great addition, like in a partner, is someone that right. has that mindset. Like, or I know I work out a lot, but sometimes I need that little push. push yeah. So if you don't work out at all, then we probably not gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> no, we both be lazy in the house. We both gonna be, you know, doing eating, snacking, everything. Yeah, so I need together. someone to compliment me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good. No one. big backs right. over here. <laughs> Yeah, true, true, true. I would say, yeah, definitely. Like, it has to, we have to align, mm -hmm. like, you know, and we have to be in addition to each other, not, you know, yeah. taken away from each other, for sure. Okay, so that um, brings me to my next question. Where is it at? Um, Okay, so do you believe it's important for partners to have similar standards and values, or can differences be reconciled? Um, yeah, I feel like different differences can be reconciled. Um, like men's standards are way different than female standards. I think that they value different things. Yeah. Like we value like displays of affection and like mm -hmm. checking emotional. We're more emotional. Like that's our standard. Like, do you comfort me? Do you make me feel safe? Mm -hmm. Like a man's standard, they're they don't care about that. Like they more care about are you loyal? Like are you embarrassed? Like they don't yeah. want a girl that's embarrassing them in public and right. stuff like that. Yeah. Like so I don't know. We have different standards, but I feel like some of them do align. So you just have to talk to your partner. But what do you think? Um, similar standards. I would say, I would say yes in a way because like you have to un be able to understand your partner's needs. Mm -hmm. You know, so like even though he might like, you know, physical affection, and I might like um, words of affirmation or something like that. Blah blah blah. But, like, he has to be able to understand my needs and have to be able to understand his. So, not necessarily, like, similar standards, but I guess you have to be open to, you know, yeah. understanding each other. Like, if, if it's on, like, you don't even care about, you know, that type of stuff and it doesn't, it doesn't bother you to understand it, then it's obviously it's going to, we're going to clash. But I think, if not similar standards, you have to at least understand and be willing to understand um, and I think that would be the only really way it's gonna work. Yeah. Um, Cause if it's complete opposite, like it's, it's not. <laughs> it's yeah. not gonna work. It's I'm trying work. to think of like women and what our standards are. I feel like we have a lot of petty standards, like as women. Like we require a lot. You think so? Yes. Like what? <laughs> I mean, like, for like the whole holding the door, like holding the door open for me, and like. When you walk in somewhere, you know, they grab your suitcase. Like, if you go in somewhere traveling, your man is supposed to grab your stuff. Yeah. And, like, I mean, we don't, that's a lot. <laughs> but in this, today's society, men don't be want, right. want to do that. So, or what else? I'm trying to think. Like, buying flowers, buying gifts, planning dates. Yeah. Like that's a lot on a man, especially if he's trying to build himself up and, like, get his money right. And you're mm -hmm. asking him to... <laughs> <laughs> your, your standard is for him to buy you uh, flowers and right. buy you... Take me on a date, date on uh, dates. expensive dates. Yeah. And, you know, all that it's not that. really his priority, but your standard is that you accept that so like you do have to reconcile like with where he's at in his life yeah and be understanding like maybe it won't happen this year but he's capable of doing that mm -hmm. but he's on his way that's not a good reason to leave somebody <laughs> like I'm, 
I, we're not saying do that. Right, right. Because when he up, he's going to remember, like, you was there, right. you know, when, when he was trying to get his stuff together and stuff like that. But I, I, don't, I don't know. I feel like, like, my standards are not bare minimum. Because I don't know, like, I've, I've always gotten bare minimum or or below bare minimum, you know? So, like, the extra stuff, like, that Dre does for me is, like, like what the hell? Like, it's, it's, yeah. I'm not used to it. So, but I've always just wanted the bare minimum. Like, that's it. So, because that's because that's all I've really gotten. Or I've liked even the bare minimum. So, I don't know. But, like, he, he does all of that, and I don't expect it at all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he, he does it because that's the type of man he is. But... I don't know. I guess for it just depends on your upbringing, for real. Like, if you have if you had a dad that does that stuff for you, like you're gonna expect that. That's the thing. It's like when you date someone who shows you like different. Does your bare minimum increase? Uh, like, do you? Is that like the <laughs> now he's the bar? He raised yeah, the he's bar. Saying, yeah, he's, yeah. So now anything under that, you're gonna be like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because so I can't go back. Yeah, yeah we're not going yeah. back. I can't go back. Yet. I can't go backwards. But yeah, because even like, like, if he'll buy me flowers, like he bought me flowers, like he always buys me flowers, something like that. But if I haven't gotten flowers in a in a week or two, I'm like, damn, man, I ain't got flowers. Like, yeah. you know, you know I'm like, this. <laughs> like now I'm expecting it. Like, right. dang, you ain't, you know, you ain't. And could, that's could how, be there in a minute, like you know, but yeah, I've never got that, you know. But now that you set that bar, now I'm expecting it every right. time. Like you introduced me to that vibe. Yeah, like, that's now. the thing is now I know what's I know what, what I'm I capable can. of. Yeah, I know what you're capable <laughs> of. So anything less than that, right? Like, yeah. What's going on? Is that that's kind of fucked up? It is fucked <laughs> up. That's why I said we be so fatty. Like it is fucked up. But, but you gotta we think, do our part yeah. too. Like we gotta just, think their standards of us too. Like yeah. I feel like they have some petty standards. They do. They do. They, do. they have some. Like the social media thing, I find that like with my past relationships, they don't want me to do certain things on social media, and I never understood that. Like what? Like. You know, if I want to post something like where I'm at or my outfit, I mm -hmm. never thought that that would be a red flag, like in a man's, yeah. you know, standards. Is it just but a I'm normal learning. picture? But like, you know, if I want to go out with my friends and be at the club, like mm -hmm. I can't, in my past relationship, not the one I'm in now, but in my past relationship, that would be like, oh, why are you posting? You're posting that for attention and you're posting it for likes. And I've never seen that yeah. like perception. But the way that everyone else moves, like, all the other women in this culture, mm, yeah. it's like giving people a false idea mm -hmm, of, because yeah. uh, women do do that for attention, but I'm not that type of woman, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. And so people can't, men can't identify that behavior in a good woman versus like, oh, she's just doing it to like express herself, let loose, yeah, or she out here to like actually find a attention, man and do something. Yeah. But I, I feel like that also comes with like, trauma in their past like maybe their last girlfriend she she was doing it for attention or every time they got into an argument she would post herself on instagram to you yeah. know try and get attention or something like that you know it could come with trauma and it i mean it could come with self-confidence like they might be insecure mm -hmm. stuff i like think that. that's what it is yeah sure. something in their past made them like that mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but yeah, I don't, the social media thing. I don't. I think it's it's just not good for yeah, relationships. It's not. <laughs> it's not. I don't think it is. Like, mm. I've tried to stay off of social media lately, cause I used to post a lot more. <laughs> I used to post a lot more. So I've done. I've done good. Like yeah. I'm off of the social media. I just focus on like you and I, mm -hmm. and not like the outside noise. Yeah, and like not even like even if it is like us. You like keeping it within yourself too, like between your relationship, because like mm -hmm. we would post each other all the time, and I would post like what he did for, does for me, what he would post what I do for him. We would post like, oh, you know, we're so happy, we're so this and that, and it's like you never know really who's 
upset that y'all are happy, who's praying on y'all's demise. Right. Like, you just never know. So, like, we have to stop doing that so much because you never know. Like, you never right. know who's looking. You never know. Like, so, all of that. I think social media is just... Yeah, I try not to post too much. Like, I post about the podcast stuff or, like, I repost, like, a little quote or something like that. Or if I'm doing something, like, but not as far as myself. Like, I try not to do that too much or, like, as far as us together. It's just because you never know, like. You're right. You know. People could be watching your story that they want in your man. Exactly. Last really. five years and now they see you. Now they're going to. No, I'm not. <laughs> Literally. Mm-mm. Keep those. Yeah. Mm-mm. Okay, let's see. Okay, so have you ever had to reassess or adjust your standards in a relationship? And if so, like what prompted yeah. the change? <laughs> Cause you know, I'm a little bit of, of a brat, so I had to <laughs> I gotta readjust my standards a lot. Like I don't know, being alone, like, since I moved to here, I've been more alone, and I feel like being more alone and being in your own space, like, you realize how hard it is, I think, mm -hmm. for other people, like, your age, doing the things that we're trying to do, and, like, you kind of have a reality check of, like, okay, some of the things that I'm looking for are, like, bizarre. <laughs> like, what? I'm expecting way, way, way too much. Like, yeah. for example, like, if I want to travel, I have to realize, like, not everyone is in that same, like, time of their life to be able to travel to, and yeah. just get up and go. Right. And not everyone's jobs are set up like that. And I feel like I get spoiled sometimes because, like, I have the luxury of my job of being remote, like, two mm -hmm. days of the week. And so I feel like that's a standard for me, but not, like, for my partner. Because I think traveling is something that's really, really important to me. But I have to remember that, you know, not yeah, everyone's right. schedule is set up that way. So right. stop being a brat. <laughs> like, lower that standard and just, you know, try to be more understanding. Yeah. So. I think that, too. It's like, especially with traveling or just traveling or just doing, like, just doing anything. Because, you know, we don't have kids, but, like, everybody really around me has kids. So it's like. Oh, I want to go do this or I want to do that. And I'm thinking, oh, like, you don't want to do something with me or you never have time for me or, you know, stuff like that. You never have time to, to hang out and do stuff that I want to do. But, you know, but, like, you have your own family. Literally, like, you have your family. You have this going on. You have that going on. You have a lot, probably a lot more than what I'm used to because I don't have any kids, you know. I don't have to find a babysitter. I don't have to, right. you know, pay for child care and stuff like that. So I think it is, like, not even just setting standards in a relationship, in friendships too. Friendships, yeah. Because, like, everybody's life is different. Everybody's yeah. life is different. And, like, learning that it's not personal. Yeah. Like, Ooh, that is hard for me. Can you program that? <laughs> because it's like, when someone tells you they can't hang out, you automatically feel like, okay, over and over, you feel like it's you, but yeah. it's not. Like, mm -hmm. they have their own life, they're doing their own thing, and, like, yeah. not everyone's lives look the same, so... Right. Just understanding that and trying to find time with that person that works for both but, of us. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay, that's kind of how I was like about this podcasting. I'm like, dang, nobody wants to support me. Nobody wants to be in my videos. Nobody wants to watch my videos. And I'm like, and then like he was telling me like, well, maybe you know, podcasts are just not their thing, you know, or maybe they don't want to talk, or you know, maybe they got this going on and that going on. But I'm like, okay, like I get, I get it. Yeah. But, like, you can, you can share it or, you know, you can repost it or something like that. But it's, like, not that it's personal. Maybe they just forgot. Maybe they saw it and they wanted to go back and watch it and they just didn't have time. Or, you know, maybe they are scared of the camera. Maybe they don't want to be on YouTube for some reason. You know, like, something like that. But I was taking it personal. Like, no, 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 support me. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to not take it personal. But, yeah, it is. Definitely. I'm trying to think of a time, like, just outside of friendship where I had to, like, um, I'm trying to think, like, in a relationship, what if I had to readjust my standards? Um, okay, I don't know why, but I love to be in people's skin, like, when I'm in a relationship, <laughs> like, physical touch, 
<laughs> it's too. a big thing for me. Like I want to be all up on you. Yes, yeah, same. But for some you. men, they be like, "You're they being must, clingy. Yeah. Like, you're too much." Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I see it as you know, connection. I see right. it as quality time. And they see it as like overbearing Over, into yeah. their space. Right. And so I had to be like, okay, let me note that down. Like, yeah, okay, I have to level set that person and see. I, yeah, I, definitely that. But I, luckily, he's he's the same way. Like we're both like touchy feely, like just all in each other. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's easy now. But like previous relationships, like I did have to learn how to, you know, not not be so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I had to learn that too. But also, I feel like this is a, a standard that I actually recently just had to like readjust. Is like during disagreements or like arguments or something like that. Like I like to resolve the issue right then and there. Like I don't I want it. Want to do yes, that too? Like, bro, I like you're not leaving. We're not going to sleep now. Like I oh want to God. resolve it right now. Like I want to get to. The, I want to come to a common ground right now. Like I want to go to bed cuddling again. Like I don't want to be mad at each other going to bed. Like I want to resolve it right now. Mm -hmm. And then like, but other people like he wants his space. He wants to take a step away from it and calm down first, then come back. And I'm like, no, that's how I am <laughs> No, let's talk about it right now. Like, but it, and I know that it never goes anywhere. Like I'm mad, you're mad. Yeah. We're not, it's not going to get resolved. Like, yeah. And so him just walking away from it, taking a deep breath, like us both really, us both taking a deep breath, like, you know, talking within ourselves and calm down and see, like reassess it individually and then coming back to it mm -hmm. together it just makes it so much healthier so that's something i definitely had to <laughs> yeah i recently that happened to me too because my boo he likes to go and he likes to have his own space like mm -hmm. after an argument and i'm the same way i'm like where are you going right like, exactly no <laughs> we finishing this right now yes, yes. but no girl <laughs> that i feel like that will lead to you know uh high intense yes. argument so i'm so glad he's like not a confrontational person yeah i'm more confrontational right <laughs> i'd be like okay mm -hmm. well and the thing is like i get over stuff a lot quicker so i'd be like we'll just full-blown argument yelling screaming okay we about to get in the bed now <laughs> like he'd be like what are you just mad yeah why are you just mad like no i'm leaving i'm like <laughs> Why? Right. <laughs> Let's just so, get over it. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. That's I gotta really adjust that. Yeah. I'm. I'm. It's definitely. I don't know. It's hard because I've always been like that. Like always. Not even like even growing up. Like no, we're gonna talk about this shit right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna talk about it right now. Right this second. Yeah. Yeah. I'm weak. Yeah. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> I'm dead. <sighs> okay. Um. Okay, so how how have you communicated your standards to your partner without coming across as demanding or controlling? I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> Not <Wait>. this way. <laughs> oh my god. Um, that's a good question. I don't think I've I don't think I've learned to either. Like, I think as as it as it comes up, then I'll like try and express it, but. In the beginning, I don't yeah. like. I, I really don't, and that's probably why. Like a lot of, I don't. I won't say a lot of my relationships because I've only been in a few relationships. But like even just the talking stage and stuff like that, it doesn't like go far because yeah. I don't tell you what my standards are. Like I until it comes up. Wi-Fi network. So you can find and then it just ends up like um, it ends up like turning into a bigger situation because now like. You're not moving how I want you to move. You're not doing like you know the things that that I look for in a man and stuff like that. But I should have told you that in the beginning so that it could resolve all of this. Either you're not the one for me, or you're gonna yeah. you know. I don't know. I it's hard to not come off like demanding when you're like setting standards. Yeah. Because then it's just like it's an it's non-negotiable. Yeah. Right. Like, and we're talking about like the bare minimum. We're not talking about anything like extra right like the bare minimum is to like be genuine be respectful like don't call me out my name don't cuss at me like i don't know that that should be bare minimum and yeah. so i feel like 
that I'm kind of like, okay, well, I, I don't allow that. Like, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with you speaking to me that way, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Just like saying it point blank. And then you got to leave sometimes so they really get it. Yeah. Like, if you Shoot. just say it and then you stick around and they're going to be like, okay, oh, well, yeah. that's something I could like. Yeah, I can get I over it. I can get over it. Yeah. That. No, I say it and I'm gone. Right. And you don't feel that absence. Mm -hmm. And then you gonna come correct. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, she, she, yeah. she's, she's serious about that. Right, like, yeah. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> how you have to do it because, I don't know, I feel like they won't. Same with me. Like, sometimes I like to, you know, to test, test somebody. somebody. And if I know you're gonna, like, leave it at that and I'm not gonna get that rise out of you or that reaction out of you, then that's how I learn. It's like, okay, I'm, he's not okay with that. Right, so yeah. So, I gotta stop doing that. But... I don't know. I feel mm -hmm. like when you're early in a relationship, that's okay. But as you go forward, like you definitely want to say it so where like they're more accepting and mm -hmm. like be nice about it. Right. And simply just ask them like, hey, look, like I wasn't comfortable with what happened last night. Like I even like wait for the time to go down. Yeah. Like, so like it happened. Mm -hmm. And so they can actually hear it better. Like when emotions settle, I yeah. feel like they're more receptive. To what you say so and like and with your emotions like it's better to sit on it and let your emotions calm down so it doesn't like come out come off rude or you know stuff like that yeah i don't know that is kind of hard though because because yeah because when you're setting those initial standards like you have to be kind of stern about it because yeah. i'm not just gonna be like yeah well you know I really, I really don't like this. Yeah. Uh, no, my I don't like, like that shit. Don't do that. Yeah, like, you this is what you're gonna to. do. This is what you're not gonna do to me. Cause that's no, yeah. Yeah, you kind of have to lay it on. Yeah, it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, and then yeah, as as time goes by, if it's other things that come up, then you can address it that way in a more like, you know, easy way. But initially. Yeah, you gotta yes. initially you gotta let them know. <laughs> yeah, like hey, look, that wasn't okay. I don't play that. Like, right. Mm -mm. That's right. And I find that I don't know sometimes bringing up like what you had in another relationship. I know it's not good to do that, but when you first meet someone, I feel like if they know that you're used to being treated a certain way, they'll step their game up. Yeah. Is that wrong? Is that bad? Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. Like, I would be like, I've never been, like, I've never been spoken out my name like this before. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, really? Yeah. Like, okay. I don't think, no, I don't think that's bad. Yeah, because I think that they're trying to get to know, like, what you'll deal with. Mm -hmm. What like, you can what tolerate. You, yeah. And, yeah. What? Well, yeah, what you'll let go, what you'll, yeah. I, I don't think it is, unless you, like, keep bringing it up and keep bringing it up. Oh, like, my last nigga did this and my, yeah. you know, like, stuff like that. But if it's just you telling them, like, listen, I never put up with this, so I'm not going to put up with it now, then that's, right. that's something different. But yeah. I don't think anything's wrong with it. Even, and, and it's like... You have to think like your past kind of made you who you are. So I, I feel like it's normal to talk about your past, like, right. so they can understand, like, yeah. okay, this is what I should be doing. This is what I shouldn't be doing. Like, I think that's normal. Mm -hmm. I think it's good too, because you kind of like get a, a clearer picture mm -hmm. of that of your person. Partner, yeah. Yeah. So like. I mean, and especially not even like good things that happen in your past, like bad things that happen mm -hmm. in your past, you want to like let your partner know so you know not to like trigger mm -hmm. that yeah. again. Like, so it works both ways, like with setting, setting standards and like setting boundaries, boundaries on what not to do and what to do. Yeah. Because I, I think with us, like we learned as we, as situations came up, it's like, oh, you feel some type of way about this. And I, I don't know that the, what I did made you feel some type of way until you, right. oh, so, well, my ex did this, da, 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 and it, it, you know, it triggered me. Like, oh, okay, now I know yeah. that when I do that, it triggers you not to do that, you know, so. Yeah, and now you're mindful of when you mm -hmm. do that thing, like, you're mindful of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it helps to know it earlier on, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes people, I think people don't, like, it's good that he said that, that triggered him. 
Right. You know, some people don't tell you, mm -hmm. and they just like build animosity up. Right. And then the whole day they mad at you. I'm like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> I don't even know what I did. Like, yeah. and you act in a certain way towards me. Yeah. And it's because they felt some type of way, like yesterday. Yeah. You know? Like why not? Yeah. I, communication is really big. Like communicating trauma, communicating trigger, mm -hmm. communicating like all of that feelings. Communication is huge. Yeah very important because mm -hmm. you don't know when until right. you know like I, I won't know that that bothered you until you tell me so mm -hmm. unless it's just blatant like cheating or lying or you know stuff like that but yeah things that like we're not aware of like because it didn't happen to us right how yeah. are we supposed to know mm -hmm. so like talking to your partner and figuring out like what triggers them from your past or anything like it's really really healthy and then you can set boundaries from that mm-hmm yep, yep. Mm. okay okay can setting standards help create healthier and more fulfilling relationships or do they risk becoming unrealistic expectations um I think both a little bit like there's always a risk of sending a person away because they don't meet your standards, but it's like, we're too grown to be caring about that now. Like, right. we're too grown to be figuring out a year later, like. Right. So. Cause then, I mean, cause if you don't set those standards, then you're settling. And it's like, yeah. overall, it's, it's not gonna turn out good right. anyway. Cause you're settling on something that, you know, that, that, that went went against your standards. So I feel like it, in the long run, like if they're, if they really want it, if they really want you, they want to build with you and stuff like that, then they are going right. to be mindful of those, you know, standards and you're, they're going to respect those standards. I mean, if they just simply can't, like if, if you're stand, like, oh, I don't want to be with somebody that, you know, I don't know, I don't know, for example, but like if it's just something that they just can't fix or something like that, like, okay, then yeah. Like you just had to go, but if they respect you and want to be with you and stuff like that, I feel like those standards, they're going to abide by them. Yeah. And it's going to overall be healthier. Cause okay. I know that she likes this. I know she doesn't like this. I know so-and-so blah, blah, blah. They're going to, you know, respect those standards and yeah. it's going to be healthier overall. Like and vice versa. I think like you have to level set your standards and like you should be able to identify if your standards are delusional or not because a lot of us women we have standards on physical traits <laughs> like that's something that okay you're c causing a delusional yeah. relationship because you have a standard like oh I want him to be 6'4 <laughs> and I want him to be six pack and then he gotta have six figures right. Like right. you're, where are you gonna <laughs> find like now? Are you're you delusional? Yeah, like, like yeah. And I feel like your your standards, setting standards, they have to be realistic, and they have to like like you're expecting somebody with you know six figures and stuff like that, or you or especially with kids, like it'd be people no kids. with kids and be like, oh, I don't want a man with kids. Yeah. You have kids yourself, like you yeah. can't do that. I'm or bad. like like for real, like you. <laughs> The, the the standards just the double don't be standard, realistic. The double standards. Yeah. Like you don't even hold yourself to the <laughs> standard, but you want You want somebody rich, but you on section eight. Like come right. on, you can't. Like, it's not it, it, yeah, it has to be realistic. Like, and then they'll be like, Well, I can't find a man. I'm like, Well, like check your standards. Yes, yeah. That's you probably have to where you need to start. evaluate yourself <laughs> first, man. Yeah. Like are you, are your standards too high for your like, you know, for yourself? Because you can't be down here and you expect somebody up here. Right. Like you're never going to be, no. <laughs> you're never going to be happy. That's unrealistic. And it's like the high value man thing, like that whole last year or 2020, there was a whole trend of like getting a high value man, high value man. I don't know. Have you what ever heard of Kevin Samuels? <laughs> okay. He was this guy who was on YouTube and used to like preach to women on like what to do and what not to do to find a high value man. And I feel like that, diluted a lot of people really yes because i just feel like you're looking like there's no tell of a high value man like you can't look and see yeah. if he's high value like you have to get to know, to him, know him first yeah. and i feel like that 
I don't know, that will cause a delusional like dating mindset. It's like you're looking for certain things that aren't set in like in writing. Like you yeah. can't you there's no way for you to know that until you get to know that person. Mm -hmm. So I mean a little bit to answer your question, like there is a risk of that, but you still have to like let people know. Mm-hmm. And I I mean, and if it is like I don't know. Like, if if your standards are too high for them, then uh, is that really a risk? Like, they're not for you, right? You know, like, is that really a loss? Because you you told them what you're looking for. You told them, you know, the type of you know your expectations, and if mm -hmm. it's not really a loss because they're not they're not up to your standards, you know. Right. I feel like if you have a list of standards and you meet someone that makes like sixty percent. You think like, you're when do you cut off, you know, when, yeah. how do you determine, okay, if that should be worth, like, pursuing further? Right. And that's why I was, that's another question I was going to ask you is, like, like, do you feel like there's compromise? Yeah. There's, yeah. There's definitely compromise. Like, I don't know. If you're big on looks, you have to compromise a lot. Because yeah. it's like... I don't know. I used to be like, okay, I want to be 6'4", I want to be this, I want to like play sport and athlete. Like I used mm -hmm. to be like that. And so like once I stopped looking for those things, then I could really get to know people for like how, you know, they really are. Right. And so like you have to compromise your standards. Like it's always, every year I learn something new about myself. I'm always compromising like my standards. Yeah. So. Like, and then like just as you grow like certain things don't like aren't you you realize certain things aren't as important like yeah you know we're, we're in anymore. high school yeah. we're like you know I'm not playing basketball no more so I don't really yeah. care if you're an athlete right. like I'm not an athlete no before more before it was like okay you know love and basketball <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> now it's like okay shoot yeah, as long like, as you go to the gym you know, right? Yeah. Look like you're somewhat in shape. Like I'm cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> Eat healthy. Like you actually care about your health a little bit, but like yeah. I'm, I'm not. Do, I'm not too active either. I go to the gym, but like, yeah. like I'm, I can't expect this freaking bodybuilder or this, you know, triathlete, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not doing nothing too much, you know, myself yeah. anymore. So I think it definitely changes with like age and and stuff like that too. But besides looks, I feel like a man has to make me laugh. Like, I want to have a good time. Like, it mm -hmm. has to be, like, a best friend type of yes. vibe. Like, whenever we're out. Like, that is big. So, it's like, okay, I'm going to put the looks and, like, the high requirement and everything, like, to the side. I'm going to think about, like, how are we when we have our one-on-one -on -one time? Like, mm -hmm. how does it feel? And I'll look back on the night and be like, wow, like, that felt like he was my best friend. Right. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. and like, I, yeah, like that too. And like, can I learn from you? Like, are you? I don't know. Like, certain things, I I feel like I can't compromise. Like, if you have, if you don't add to me at all, like, no. Like, if if I can't learn from you, if we can't, like, you know, grow together, I can't teach you. You can't teach me. If we're not, if we're just sitting around, just coexisting right. like nothing's really happening no nobody's growing stuff like that like I feel like because that was my last relationship well, well I was you know doing what I had to do but I felt like if if it wasn't me like we would just kind of be coexisting like we're just here mm -hmm. like you don't want to grow you don't you know stuff like that so I think that's definitely important because we can't be stagnant like we both can't just be sitting around like you know not wanting nothing for each other so I think that definitely like the quality time, like being able to be around each other, like we don't never want to leave each other, like yeah. ever. <laughs> we don't never want to leave each other. So like we actually enjoy being around each other. We have fun, like stuff like that. He teaches me stuff all the time. All he does is read and and like learn on on. Uh, yeah, like so I can. That's learn what from you him. need is like someone that does something like different, mm -hmm. kind of like than what you're used to, and brings new things into your life mm -hmm. and like makes you more complete and also. The accountability, like if you have a goal and you have something set for yourself and your partner realizes like, hey, you said you want to lose like 
10 pounds like you're not in the gym so right someone yeah. to, like hold you accountable and your own personal journey has like, your best interest yeah, yeah definitely or you That's said true. we said we was eating right this week you've been to chipotle <laughs> you've been to kfc like three times this week yeah. so i need someone to like okay keep me you know, the right yeah. So that's very important. Thanks. So how, this is a good one. <laughs> how do cultural or societal influences shape our perceptions on um, relationship standards? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Social media is like one of the biggest things that shape like our standards and it's just very toxic. It really is. Um, a lot of unrealistic expectations come out of just watching social media because mm -hmm. we see what other people are getting or we see what other people are doing and then it makes us feel like we're or I should be getting that or yeah. like I'm not where I need to be in my relationship because I'm always like comparing my situation mm -hmm. to what you see on social media and it's just like we're the only ger generation that's had to actually deal with yeah. that. Yeah. Because it used true. to be like, you just know what you and your partner mm -hmm. are up to. You don't know what the whole world is up to. And so like, I don't know. It plays a big, big part. Honestly. It does. And to be honest, like we're only, we're basing our relationships. Well, I would say our generation, like our generation is basing our relationships off of what what we what they want us to see like they're probably going through the same thing yes. that we're going through they're just yes. not sharing it like they're showing the birkin bags they're showing the trips to dubai they're showing the right. all of this but like what's really going on like these couples are breaking up every two months they're you know like yeah. all this other stuff so it's really not like the standards that we think they, like we should look up to is this not reality like that's yeah <laughs> that's not somebody or a relationship that you should look up to you know because they're it's infidelity issues all the time it's you know they never home you know like all of that like you just i don't know i feel like instagram and social media is it it ruins it ruins the perception of relationships because we didn't care about oh he got money he got chains he got this he got that like yeah. if you're a stand-up guy you're a stand-up guy like what is flat, flashy jewelry? What is that changing? Like you could still be a terrible man and with money. Like right, and right. it'd be the people with money that be all fucked up and stuck I know. out. It'd be them ones that have all the money that treat women the worst. Yeah, honestly. literally, literally. So, and I feel like um, sometimes our relationships might be going way better than the relationships you see online, but you would never know it because. Like you said, they're only showing you the highs. They're not yeah. showing you the lows. But like you and your partner, you could be rocking out like in a medium, you know, yeah, a medium right. area. But like it feels like you are still missing out on something because yeah. they're controlling the narrative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, social media definitely impacts that. Also, I think that social media gives us unrealistic expectations as far as like. PDA, like a lot of social media people, they want to put everything like to the forefront of like so people can see like what they're doing and mm -hmm. oversharing. It almost feels like we know every aspect of their Literally. lives and like we have to remember that regular people, like that's not <laughs> normal. Like I know like it's the normal thing to like like spend a day with someone and you're in someone's house and like you're watching them from morning to like night with our partner and like some people don't want to share that much right yeah like they like privacy in their relationship so mm -hmm. that's something that we're the first generation to ever ever, ever. have to do that's, that yeah that is true i didn't really realize that we are the first generation yeah we want everyone to see like everything yeah. and some people i think like with being viral and being like popular and getting all that stuff like that's a way to do that but it's like compromising your like security with in your relationship like you could definitely go for that and be viral and be a great couple but like how many couples have we seen on youtube like that diera and ken, ken? Yeah. and then when stuff goes south like the whole world knows yeah yeah i don't um, like I, yeah, I, don't I don't like that, that. yeah <laughs> like 
I don't like that. It's like Clarence and um, Queen. Mm -hmm. It's like. We know a lot about their relationship. I mm -hmm. feel like I'm in that relationship. Right, with them exactly. At this point. Like, I don't like that. I know your son's birthday. I know this. Like, I know. Yeah, literally. Like, yeah, I don't know. I definitely feel like social media has has just, like, taken our relationships, like, too far. The expectations, the, the broadcasting, and all of that. Like, certain things. And it's like you have something to prove. Like, um like we're trying to live up to the narratives that we see so like oh you know um g herbo buys Taina all these flowers and stuff like that and now like oh i get flowers let me post it like you know we're just trying to live up to yeah. social media's means and like what we see and like all this other stuff you know we try and post it and to show everybody that we're getting treated right and stuff like that but really that it's just it's normal. Really, like you're he, supposed he really to be he just cheating on her, and he bought her flowers. <laughs> right. And yeah. now you want some flowers because it's validating. Like, okay, I'm getting what you know. Yeah. She got exactly. Meanwhile, that's because something else happened yeah. behind the scenes and, that and we don't know about. We don't know yeah. about. So you're asking your man for flowers. He never cheated on you, <laughs> but you're right. mad at him because he didn't get you flowers. So it's like. Backwards, yeah. we're very backwards in this society. Mm -hmm. So definitely like, super backwards. Yeah, yeah. We try and live up to try to get validation and all this yeah. other stuff. When really, I mean, just do what you should be doing as a man. Like I don't, I shouldn't have to feel like I have to broadcast what you're doing for me, and that, and that's the bare minimum, you know. Right. Like you're doing what you're supposed to do as a man. Like why does the world need to know that, you know? Yeah. Last question. So, what advice would you give to someone who is struggling to define or assert their standards in a relationship? Mm. Okay. Um, my first piece of advice would be to separate yourself from the situation. If you, if you find that you're not able to like express yourself, whether it's because he's not allowing you the space to share, or maybe you just don't have that self-confidence enough to do it. I feel like that all roots back to like self-love. Self mm -hmm. And maybe you just need to separate yourself, reconnect with yourself, do the things that you enjoy doing, like have a self-care day, mm -hmm. like do something for yourself and try to build up that confidence. And so that way you can go back in that relationship and be, um, just more confident in expressing how you feel and if you can't do that like if it doesn't take a weekend or whatever like maybe just spend some time by yourself for a little bit you know and get into the habit of knowing like how you want to be treated and um yeah i think self-love like self -love. spending more time with yourself yeah i think yeah definitely self-love um I think it definitely starts there because you have to know, like, first of all, you have to know yourself and what you bring to the table, and right. you have to know like the type of person that you are, and you have to you have to know like your what you require, what makes you happy first, so you know what to seek. Like, if you you don't even know your love language, like you know you have to find those things out by yourself. You have to find you know that those things out. The you know finding yourself going through that journey first, so you know what standards you're even going to set. You know, so and it took me like after my high school relationship, I took probably like four years before, you know, I got into a, a real relationship again. Mm -hmm. So it it takes time. Like that broke me all the way down. That relationship it was toxic. Like abusive all the other stuff and it really took me time to know like to figure out myself again build myself back up so it definitely takes time and it's, there's no time limit for real yeah. like you never know because once you know you might think like okay well I think I'm strong enough to get into a, a relationship I know what I want I know what I don't want stuff like that and then you get into a whole nother relationship where he comes with a whole bunch of other different things that your right. last person didn't have right. so now it's like well Thing. like do I want to tolerate this like is this something that you know I could deal with I can compromise you know so it definitely takes time like trial and error like we yeah. said in the beginning like you never really know until you go through it so even if you know you have went on that self-healing journey and then you uh, find somebody else and then it's something else like no 
I don't really like that or that situation, you know, cause more trauma and stuff like that. Like it's, I feel like it's just a never ending cycle of, you know, finding yourself in, in that self healing journey and self love. Like you should continuously, that's a continuous journey, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and also like knowing what's a compromise, I feel like yeah. is, is big. Like what's, what is like your, your, your hard standards, like what are you not compromising and what's like, oh, uh, that's important, that's not important, right. you know, stuff like Knowing, that. Knowing like what is going to happen for you to walk away, like if this happens, I'm walking away, but other things that I can work through, I can deal with, mm-hmm. and um, like you said, if you're single, there's no time limit, like on how long it takes, because like you say, something could trigger... Or you might think you're over something and then something could trigger all over again. Right. And so you're back. But you're just knowing how to deal with it when mm-hmm. those feelings start to come up. Like, that's why it's important to be with yourself because you make yourself happiest like when you're by yourself. Yeah, like, you're going to pour your glass of wine. You're going to put your show on. You're going to yeah. do your foot, um, like, massage. Or you're going to go get your lashes done. Like, you're going to do all those things. So you have to remember, like, what you did when you were by yourself is the same thing that you should be doing, like, within your relationship to keep Mm -hmm. yourself feeling, like, good. Yeah. Like, don't fall. That's another thing. A lot of people, like, fall off of their routine, like, when they get somebody else. Because they want to, they want to nurture that other person yeah with that other person and so you forget like oh i used to enjoy you know xyz but you're so focused on like giving to that person cooking for that person or you might even switch up like what you used to do because that person doesn't like it anymore Mm -hmm. right say you really love beef I love beef. <laughs> I'm weak at the example. <laughs> study partner you try to make sure they're on you know they're trying to study for exam or uh, they're trying to get their MBA or their degree and you're trying to help them you're trying to be the best partner that you can be so that means like taking time out of your day to stop doing like the things that you normally like to do to like help them mm-hmm. and like over a while like sometimes you find yourself being cranky or being crabby it's because you forgot to do like your routine yeah, sometimes. Right. So it's like recognizing when, you know, you need a day to yourself or you need time so you can get back in that mode to be the best person yeah. in your relationship and show up as that person. Because mm-hmm. Cause a, a, a lot of your relationship is going to be like compromise and sacrifice. So you have to know like what what you can sacrifice, when you should sacrifice it, when you can't, like, you know, when it's like, okay, like, I can't do it right now, like, I have to get myself together, or, you know, right. I, I'll, you know, once I'm to where I need to be, or, you know, after my nail appointment, then I'm gonna, you know, come, come help you with this, you know, like, mm-hmm. still making time for yourself, as well as showing up for your partner, 
Right. Um, just that that good balance. It's, it's. I mean, I feel like it's kind of hard. But at the same time, like. It's not like if you if you want to do it, then you, yeah. it's it's gonna happen. It's and it's compromise and understanding on both sides. Like okay, well, you know she has her nephew's her nephew's basketball game, and then my basketball game is like thirty minutes after. Like you know, mm -hmm. maybe she can she can go to his and then find a, you know make it to the the end of my game. You know stuff yeah. like that. Just being able to like communicate, understand, and compromise and sacrifice and stuff like that. Uh, I think is is big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's important not to lose like yourself because I think that women like we are givers. I think that we try so hard like to make things work or like to fit a certain idea in our head that we've had about a relationship. Like say, like we romanticize, we romanticize, is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we romanticize a lot. Yeah. Like, I'd be romanticizing everything. I'd be like, okay, when he gets home, I'm going to have this plate out here. It's going to be like a glass of wine. We're going to watch Netflix. Right. We're going to romanticize the whole night. And he'll come home and he'll already have eaten. Yeah. That would piss me off. Like, yeah. And I'll be like, okay. It really was just dinner. Like, I didn't, yeah. it wasn't that big of a deal. But it'll be like, oh my God, I spent so much time and put yeah. all this together. And you know, you came home and you weren't even hungry. Right. You're, you're late, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it's just compromise and all that good stuff. Definitely. Um, so, I feel like there's kind of like a fine line between like sacrifice and compromise and like, um, settling like mm -hmm. like when when do you think you would draw the line between like you're sacrificing and you're compromising and you're uh settling um i feel like when you are in a place like within yourself where you it's taking the energy out of you to like do the thing that you need to get done or it's disrupting your peace to a point where, like, it throws you off of your game, like, mentally. Mm -hmm. That's when you have to draw the line. Because a lot of times, um, we sit beside ourselves and, like, we, like, I know, I personally do, but I replay, like, situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and I would, like, go back through them and, like, analyze everything and be right. like, okay, why did he say that? And then try to figure out like where I went wrong, where I mm -hmm. could have went wrong. But like if it's just totally like disrupting your peace and like make you feel like you can't get up the next day, do what you need to do. Like it's time to, you know, separate yourself from that yeah. situation. Because then it's like mental health is really, really important. Mm -hmm. And so if something's dawning on your mental health to a point where you can't get your shit done. Right. Then, you know. It's probably, probably better off. Yeah. yeah, it's not good. But like littler things, like if it's not throwing you off that much, then you can sit, you can compromise, you can, you know, go back, speak to that person mm -hmm. and make sure that it doesn't get to that point where it would. Right. Like it seems like it's heading there, but we need to stop, we need to fix it before it does head in that right. direction. Yeah. Um, to piggyback off of that, I feel like even if it is small, like if it's something that I'm pointing out in the beginning, we have a conversation about it. I tell you it bothers me or I tell you I don't like it or I tell you I want you to like, you know, for example, I'll say in my last relationship, like I felt like the quality time wasn't there or I felt like, you know, the compliments and stuff like that wasn't mm -hmm. there. And I would constantly, constantly, constantly tell you like, okay, like, I want this, or I want that, or you're not doing this, you're not doing that. Bare minimum, literally, yeah. just the bare minimum. And you, sh I still have to continue to remind you and remind you. And then now it's, like, making me second guess, like, oh, well, yeah. you know, does he, is he just, is he here for me, you know, because he's actually into me, or is it something else? Like, now it's, like, dawning on me all the time. Yeah. I'm unhappy. It's constantly on my mind. Like, do I look good? Like, I think I look good, but so I'm not hearing it from him. Now. Yeah, it's like to your mm -hmm. mind. Yeah, and yeah. that's when it's like okay, because now you feel like when you go out and do things, 
you not feeling confident. Right. Like, you want to be confident in your own home. So right. In my own relationship. Yeah. Ways. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's yeah. I feel like that's very important to like let your partner know like this is what I kind of am wanting from you or this mm -hmm. is what I need and they just com completely ignoring it or not yeah. doing it over time then you gotta like yeah like that's yeah that's settling like it's 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 more than just compromising like okay like I told you the first time the second third time and right. you know you're still not <laughs> doing it okay now it's like it's compromising my self-love like now you're you're making me feel less confident in myself and stuff like I'm unhappy or I'm constantly you know trying to trying to look for your validation and stuff yeah. like that like it's just messing with my peace so that's where it's like okay now I'm settling because I know you're you I told you what I want you can't for whatever reason give it to me or you don't want to so mm -hmm. like and now I need to separate myself so I feel like I don't know I feel like it is like a fine line it is <laughs> I think a lot of times when we want things from our partner and they're not giving them to us, they're, it's not like they're capable, you know? Yeah. Like, it might not even be, like, on a flip of a dime, they're going to be able to fix that for you. Like, that's something that they probably need to go fix within themselves. Within themselves they right. need to go seek therapy for, like, and, and that's just a red flag I mean it's not a red flag but it's like okay like because they didn't do it the third time or fourth time mm -hmm. that's probably something that they need to go work on like right. everyone has trauma and so it's not even a good idea to like try to be with that person yeah. at that moment like if they went and worked on what they need to do and then they can come back right and be like okay now I'm like aware of how I was treating you mm -hmm. and I can fix it that's another story but right because like, at that point like it's you not need me healing. Yeah. yeah it's not me it's you at this point because if like I feel like especially when you're asking for like the bare minimum like yeah. and you just can't give it to me it's something within yourself or something that happened to you or whatever right. the case may be like it, it shouldn't be like hard to give the bare yeah, minimum. Yeah, if it's that like, hard, that means yeah, that yeah. they. <laughs> if it's that hard, then that means something. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm always like therapy is good, and there's multiple ways to get therapy. You don't need to be like in a session with a therapist and pay. Like, there's so many other ways to seek therapy. Like. Mm -hmm. You know, you just gotta take the time to work on yourself, and then you'll be able to be a better partner. So definitely, yeah. It's all built, boils down to self love. Yeah, for real. Like that with person, both people, yeah. like both people, both people in a relationship, both persons. Like y'all have to have that self love, like to really come together and be a like you know a power unit. Cause mm -hmm. if I have self love and you don't have self love, like. It's gonna be you're doubting me, or it's gonna be yeah. your, you know, like it's just a lot. Like it, I think both both partners have to have self love, and and if not, like he has tremendous amounts of self love, and I came into the relationship, and I'm like obviously the, my past relationship, like I kind of lost that self love, so he's actually helping me, you know, bring That's that good. back. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, and it just depends on the type of partner that you have. Like, is it? Is it something that they're willing to deal with and help you through, you mm -hmm. know, like, or is it like, oh, no, no, she's too damaged, you know, stuff like that. So it just, yeah. it depends. It, and it comes with understanding, too. Like, he knows, I, I tell him what I've been through and all this other stuff. So he knows, yeah. like, he knows how to get me there because he was there once before and he took that time for himself. So, yeah, mm -hmm. like, you're willing to accept that fact, though, and, like, you're telling him hey, look, like, this happened to me, and, like, I could use your help in this mm -hmm. area of my life. But some people, if you're not even aware that you're in that position, right. then y'all will just keep butting heads. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's good that you, again, you're communicating that. Yeah, and it all really comes to acknowledgement. Like, yeah. I had to acknowledge, like, okay, I know where I like and what I like in this area and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. the communication. And then it's like, okay, well, you know, I've been there before. Like, I know, you know, how to how to you know do better about that or I know how to get you back to where you need to be or like mm -hmm. he knows like I didn't get compliments in my last relationship like I had to ask for compliments you know I had to ask if I look yeah. good I never have to ask him that he compliments me 50 times a day you know Period. so it's just yeah. like yeah. stuff like that like he knows what 
you know, what I like, like, as, as far as self-love, as far as all of that. So he does his best to, you know, yeah. be opposite. So that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like complimenting your partner, like that's the thing. It goes a long way. Like yeah. and it's just bare minimum. Like it goes a long way. Yeah. So it's just definitely security in your relationship. With communication, with compromise, with understanding, all of that. Like mm -hmm. and the vice versa. Like I bet you bring into the relationship things that he might not have mm -hmm. had in his previous yeah. relationship. So yeah. it's just like being, you know, one like because not everyone has to have everything in a relationship yeah. like you could be at 80 and he could be at 80 but it's like finding that middle piece like you're gonna try to fill that missing part yeah. in him he's gonna mm -hmm. try to fill that missing part in you and it's like it's really important. becoming one like, yeah facts. Facts. um that was all questions okay do you have any other any closing remarks or anything Love yourself, <laughs> period. <laughs> and um, yeah, set the standards, guys. Don't don't be settling. Don't settle. For sure. And know your worth. It's all about knowing your worth. I, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good yeah, one. I feel like all right. Well, that concludes episode three of Divine Divulgence. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, comment any video ideas you guys want to see next. Comment any thoughts, questions, and do you want to shout out your Instagram or anything? Oh, yeah. Follow <laughs> me on Instagram at Miss Erin Nicole One, M I S S E R I N N I C O L E One. <laughs> Uh, and I'll tag her Instagram in the comments below as well. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you, Erin, for coming. Thank you for having me.